All right, what's going on there, guys? So this is going to be a quick app overview. I've got it connected currently to my GoPro Hero 4. Uh, I've also got the Ghost Drone plugged in. Um, the app is talking to the G-Box, so we're going to go through an app overview. I'm going to show you what you can and can't do with the settings here so you guys have an idea. So we're going to go up to settings here. As you can see, it understands that I'm using the Aerial Plus platform, which is the highest platform they made for the 1.0. We're going to go to settings up here on the left. So it's the Ghost Drone 1.0 Aerial Plus platform which is under configurations. I don't need to save it. It already remembered it because of the G-Box. So the next thing we'll do is go to preferences. And uh, I've got it set for 2D map. 3D map and satellite map I do not think work with this version, but it does work with iOS, I want to say. So 2D map for Android. Um, I have my unit set for miles per hour. Uh, I have my gimbal control set for slider. And as you can see, there is goggles. So I think this app uh, was updated from the 2.0 version to work with the 1.0 system. I'm not sure if you can get goggles to actually work with it. Gimbal type, you can choose 3D gimbal or 2D gimbal. Um, I have already set my uh, preferences for my flight parameters here. Uh, 10, I only want it at 10 meters for takeoff. I don't want to shoot it up to 30 meters. Um, I have my return height value set for 50 meters just in case you want to be above trees and everything in case it does lose signal. It's not going to return at 10 meters and smash into a bunch of trees. So I would suggest anyone flying this bird to keep it at 50 meters. Always keep it at 50 meters. Okay, you want it to shoot up in the air and then come back. 30 meters maybe, 50 is probably a real safe safe, uh, safe decision to stay at. If you do lose connection, it's going to go up to 50 meters. You don't have to worry about hitting stuff on the way back. Um, and then I just adjusted my flight speed. It was at 18 kilometers an hour. Uh, I just adjusted it to uh, uh, 30 kilometers an hour. So next time we do our waypoints, we can see if we can get it to move a little bit faster here. Um, when you start getting up into these higher speed settings, if you make any adjustments to this, I'll show you. So if I choose, let's say, 35 kilometers an hour, it'll say, notice, switching to high speed mode, please ensure flight safety, confirm. It makes you prompt to let you know that you've adjusted it, but we're going to go ahead and try it here at 30 uh, as soon as I get a chance. Uh, confirm, and uh, then you can adjust your avatar. I set everything for fast. Uh, I want my HUD display and I do want waypoints in case I want to make adjustments on the screen during avatar flight. So definitely cool that you can adjust some pretty decent settings in here. Uh, but average settings, you know, nothing too crazy. It's a very easy to understand. So we'll go ahead and save these preferences. Parameters have now been saved to the bird and the app. Um, and then you have your normal calibration. Talks you through how to go through your calibration. Um, binding, which we had to do that when we first got started. Pretty easy binding process. I have a video out about that, so make sure you check out uh, uh, Ehang Ghost Drone 1.0 uh, Android proper binding procedure. Uh, I have that video out. And then you have About, which just kind of tells you um, that you can have an update, which there isn't one. If you click on it, it tells you no update available. And then you got your firmware version. So we'll go back here. So I'm ready to fly. I've got satellites. We'll go ahead and show you avatar mode first. It's going to turn sideways here. All right, I've gone ahead and restarted the recording because now my phone is up right here. Um, so you'll notice that there's no map, nothing like that. Um, but uh, this is how you basically tilt controls, like gravity sensor. Wherever you lean your phone, it's going to go, uh, which is very interesting. And then you have your camera uh, pan up and down functionality here. Turn the gimbal, which by the way goes 360 degrees. So we hold it all the way over, it's going to spin all the way around. However, the gimbal does not center. You have to bring the gimbal back to center point if you want it to stop. So you got to figure out exactly where your preset gimbal points are. And uh, when you're flying, you probably don't want to adjust the angle pitch of the gimbal, just the yaw settings. So something to think about. You always want to have this centered uh, unless you really have to maneuver it for some reason. All you really want to use, your, use is your tilt controls. Just try to remember that, guys. Tilt controls is your best friend. So try to remember that. Um, 
then you have your pause button, which no matter what, and I want to I want to make this known, no matter what you do, guys, while you're flying, if you ever freak out or panic or don't know what it's doing, just hit the pause button, and it will stop and hover right where it's at. Okay, I can't go into how this feature works because if I take off inside the house, obviously it's going to be horrible, so I can't go completely in depth here. Um, but then you have all your telemetry readout, uh, your distance and your altitude down here at the bottom. You can see one is A with a ruler going up, one is A with a ruler going sideways. Satellites, and uh, then your battery power, and it tells you whether your motors are locked or armed. And then you see M in GPS. M is manual mode, which I'll click Manual. In. There you go. So you can hear that it's in manual mode. Um, like I said, I haven't had a chance to play with this, so I can't really go too in-depth on the controls. But I, I, I'm really scared to try manual mode because I think it's altitude hold. And I'm not sure if it's going to give me sliders or complete controllability of the quad. So that'll be something that we'll have to test out at some point uh, as I get to know this unit better. So we'll take it out of manual, manual. mode. We'll go to GPS here. Back into GPS mode, which is... Uh, what avatar runs on is gps mode so you do have like i said you do have the ability to fly this manual i don't know what kind of controls we're going to be looking at manual mode unless i take off and try to fly then i'll be able to see what we've got so we'll go ahead and stop the screen recording and we'll go back and i'll show you waypoints Alrighty, guys so we're back to the main menu here i'm going to go ahead and click on waypoints this time and uh like i said i, I won't have complete app control here um and I need to figure out what's going on in the map, so I think I just need to restart the drone. The map should be popping up in the background, but it's not right now, so I think I need to kind of restart the bird. We've kind of gone into standby because I've been sitting here so long without taking off, so it's not really bringing up the satellite um, or the map in the background. But normally there's a map here, and you can actually zoom out or zoom in just by pinching the screen to widen your field of view. So if you want to make adjustments uh, to how big the map is, just pinch the screen. And then when you take off... Uh, it'll be in you'll see a manual toggle uh, in the in the right side of the screen here you'll have kind of like a manual joystick for going forwards backwards rolling left rolling right um, you'll have your normal pause button for hover and then you'll have three other options at the bottom one is follow me mode uh, one is return to home and the other one is land and then you have your normal camera sliders left and top uh, top left and left over here and then the one with the little circle and the kind of like triangle thing in the middle that is actually to change your yaw of the bird while it's in the air so if you want to manually fly it you can grab the joystick while it's in gps mode and you can push forward and then you can let go and you can yaw the bird just by sliding that little reel over you can change the yaw settings but just remember guys it is constantly okay unless you're using waypoints it is constantly in uh, headless mode so if you yaw Forward is still going to be forward, left is going to be left, right is going to be right, back is going to be back. So, like I was saying there, sorry, roommate had to ask me a question. Um, I like There's normally a map here, I can't really show that to you, but once you take off, uh, you have three different options down there on the bottom. And uh, to set a waypoint, it's really simple. Look at your map when you're in waypoint settings, which you, you'll see your manual control, right? All you have to do is tap anywhere on the screen and you'll see a line go from your bird to that and then the waypoint that you set will say go all you have to do is click on go and your bird will automatically start to move to that waypoint uh, we'll be we'll be doing a waypoint I'll, I'll show you guys a waypoint tutorial but for right now this is your your standard app overview to show you guys what's going on with this thing so it's actually fairly nice and up in the right hand corner it tells you your flight time which is pretty cool very cool and then you have your miles per hour right next to that and then your obviously altitude and distance and then your battery life and your satellite connection bluetooth whether your motors are locked or not so definitely very cool guys so this was a quick overview like i said it's a it's a little more in depth than that but this is just the first look at uh, how the app works and functions and uh, uh the settings that i'm currently using right now and my preferences so if you guys wanted to look at those there they are this is what i have them set to currently so those are my values all right i would suggest uh for those of you starting avatar mode you probably want to start your speed and slow until you get used to how avatar mode works because it can be kind of scary at first until you understand the gravity sensor and how the compass works on it this is not just gravity sensor it also works on your compass which is really cool 
I actually kind of like that it works on your compass. So if I stuck an FPV camera on the top of this and I wore goggles, I could actually fly in avatar mode just by turning my body and leaning my phone. Uh, it would be fairly cool, actually, to fly like that. So we're definitely going to have to try that at some point. But All right, guys. Drone worship, man. And I'm out. Toodaroo.